everyone, and welcome back to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, and this is My Two Cents with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and today we're going to go over my first three hours in 3.10, and it's going to be a doozy. To begin with, though, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been going on, because you all deserve an explanation about why I disappear so much, and that's because over the last few years I've been fighting depression. I try to keep it to myself. I even keep it away from my roommate most of the time. And it led to me gaining a lot of weight and a lot of bad things starting to go on with my health. In the meantime, denial did not work for me. So I turned around, looked in the mirror way back in the end of May. And in June, I started a rigorous plan to get myself out of the hole I was in, mentally, and it worked, actually. I feel great. I'm losing weight. I'm getting, well, I'm doing my job better than I ever have, even though there's no place to go to do my job right now. I'm, I'm feeling good. Things are going well. I wish I could say the same for CIG. Every time I turned around, there was another video bashing CIG for Squadron 42's information not being out. Another inside gaming, picking the low-hanging fruit, and doing videos about a game they don't even play or are invested in, and talking about how horrible it is that it's taking so long. Now, I'm a diehard. I know that Chris and Sandy are my friends. They're my personal friends. And sometimes I gush a little bit too much about the game, but I think I've been fairly honest, which is why I still do keep that friendship, about the game over the last... Uh, I hate saying this, I'm going to vomit the last seven years. 3.10 is not the end all be all and I do have some big complaints about it and I do have some I do have some compliments about it because there are some things in it that I just really like. I'm very excited to say that I didn't have a single crash but I did have a lot of bugs in my four hours of gameplay. Well it was three hours it was an hour of setup, having to redo all my controls on my HOTUS. Took me a bit to get back into the game. Well, I also had to uninstall everything on my C drive and reinstall things. Oh, uh, there was a lot going on that day. I guess you could see that I was a little fickle when I got back into the game. So, I want to say it this way. The first thing I tried to do is I tried to go and see some of the changes that were going to make the biggest impact on me for my role play part of the game. And that, to me, is this assumption engine. I, when I go to a bar, I want someone to say hello. Kind of like cheers when everybody would yell Norm, but really, I don't want anybody yelling my name. I just want saying, hey girl, can I get you a drink? And that was something I really wanted to go and check out and see what was happening over at Wally's bar. So before you go to the bar, you really want to put on your best outfit. And then you want to go get some food in you because if you're going to drink, you want to, you know, have something to absorb it so you don't get too drunk too fast. So I spent some time trying to fix my character over here and realized all that time that I spent making the gorgeous character I made, the game actually decided to make it a male character. So we're going to go over here to Whammers, Bammers, whatever it is, and we're going to try to get a burger. This is when I start to realize that today might not have been the best day to do a video. Because after a couple of tries, I still was having this issue on almost every server where I couldn't purchase anything. Which means that the backend servers were having a lot of difficulty, which is probably why my character was not created with the right gender. Um, or with the gender I chose for my character. So this didn't happen, so tried to get some food, tried to get some drink, didn't work. So I figured, let's just go over to the bar. If I can't buy anything, at least I could see if they're going to say hello. So the beauty about this assumption engine is that it gives purpose to the NPCs that are in the game. Now, Chris really wants you to feel like you're in this living, breathing, dynamic universe. So there needs to be a lot of NPCs, because even if 
you're in one area. If we're going to have 100 star systems eventually, yes, I know, don't hold our breaths, but that's going to be there. It's going to be hard to have a lot of people in all the places that you could actually be everywhere in the, in the whole Star Citizen universe. So you need a lot of NPCs to fill in the gaps that are there when you don't have a lot of real players. So the idea is to get all these people that are doing their own thing, living their lives, and actually have real jobs. So when you walk up to a bar, the intention is for the bartender to be helping other customers cust coming up, asking for drinks, he's wiping the bar, he's cleaning glasses, and then he'll greet you and ask you, what do you want? Whatever he does, whatever the script is for that bartender. Well, in this situation, it took the better part of a minute to 90 seconds before I was even acknowledged. Yep, right but the good news is, I was able to get a beer, and it was cold, and it was a bit hoppy, a little bit malty. It wasn't exactly my flavor, but it worked. I would have liked an IPC, but for some reason, I went for this draft, and it just didn't taste so good. <laughs> anyway... I think this assumption engine is great if you're on a LAN, we're not, we're on internet connected servers, which means that we're going to have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, sorry about that folks, for server meshing to be complete so we can have better performance. And I guess that is actually going to be even better when they have more dedicated servers to the game when the game is actually live for a lot more people. But right now, it took a while for all this to happen. And to be honest with you, See you later. it was okay. So now that we're done there, I wanted to take a look at Microtech's factory line. Now this is an Apple store. And as somebody that works for Apple, I just have to say, they got almost everything right, except for everybody wears. The greeter, I don't know if this guy works for the store or not, but he just does not look like an employee that would work for them, but maybe he is. Maybe they're different in the future. Anyway, it is a beautiful place to come and purchase things, and I just wanted to buy everything in the store, even though you only need one. So when you get here, though, this incredibly large countertop over here, which might have something to do with perspective, I don't know, but it's a tremendously large countertop. It, it just lends me to believe that you would most likely have to be using a microphone or a tin can with strings to talk to the person on the other side of it when they were helping you. But, say la vie, this is a, well, it's a virtual world, so we don't have to worry about those things. So, as you walk around through here, you get to see things like the Moby Glass, some ocular devices that look like, uh, I guess they're contact lenses that let you see things in real life in augmented reality. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I, I was just trying to flub that a little bit. I just watched a show on Peacock which was called Brave New World, where those things actually take on a whole new purpose. So Factory Line also leads us to the basement. And in this situation, I think they call it the amphitheater. Down here are those primo products that Microtech wants to sell you. And they're going to be computer parts that go in your ship to fill that computer pipeline, and I can't wait to see them. They're going to be hollow tables and all sorts of things that aren't in the game right now and that you don't have a way to interact with to see what they can do. Hopefully in the future we're going to be able to see more down here. So it was cool to see, but we walk away and I will go find myself ready to do the thing I like to do the most when I first get into a brand new patch. And that's just to go fly around. Now I know the flight model has changed, so I'm going to be very selective in the ship I pick. So I take my favorite single seater that I own, and that's my 315P. I know, I know, you all have your favorite. This is mine. I absolutely love this ship. It's gorgeous. It's black. It's blue. Yes, it's a flying bruise. It's got a mini bathroom and a bed and liquor and a coffee machine and food processor. What more could you ask? Oh! a skylight that almost fills the whole ship. 
I know I sound a little bit rough on it, but I absolutely love this duck build beauty. It's a beautiful ship. It's my favorite. And we're just going to fly this today. So whenever I want to get into the game and just do a little bit, right? I just want to go out there and enjoy myself and still make a bunch of cash. I do box missions. I've done box missions in 3.9. I'm doing box missions in 3.10. But there's a huge difference. And that's something that we're going to get to in just a little bit. The difference is in 3.9... I could run box missions for, let's say, 90 minutes. And in 90 minutes, I could make 90K. About a, about a thousand a minute, right? But here I am flying around for 45 minutes to an hour, and I make 4K. It's the pendulum swings that are almost synonymous with American politics <laughs> that, that really get my goat in Star Citizen. There's no iterative changes. And I'm going to look at the flight model. There's no iterative, nothing iterative. It, it's all one big change, another big change, another big change. Nobody sets their sight in something and says, all right, we got that. Let's start fine tuning it. Everything is this huge separation from what it was before all the time. Whether it's flight model, it's the amount of payoffs that it takes. Thank you. Um, that you get from running boxes, the amount of money you make from doing missions, all these things have big swings. And to me, that makes me not want to play the game as much because it means every time there's a patch, I've got to learn everything all over again from scratch. And that makes it not fun. Now, I know visions change and I know certain implementations are going to change other things huge when you come out with these new patches but there's certain things that should have just been solidified and said all right this is what we want all right we got it working that way let's start tweaking it every patch to make it better and better and then four patches later there's a huge difference but between each patch it's not so hard Flight models have been changed so much in this game, it's gotten to the point where every time I take two or three months off of the game, or that one time I took six months, you come back, and you gotta learn everything all over again. I mean, there was a whole issue when I came back, um, back at the beginning of the year, that pushing my throttle forward was making me go backward because of the way that CIG changed all the control. And it's moves like that that really start to annoy the base of players that want to play the game. They want things to change, but they don't want things to change totally, like to be a reverse of what they were doing. And things like box missions, where I could spend 90 minutes and make 90K, maybe you back it out to like, all right, let's only give them 60K. Let's give them 45K. But in this situation, you might make 8K. It's going to be harder to put those missions together because when you get a box mission now, you're going to be getting four boxes, three boxes, two boxes, whatever it is for one mission, then you're going to go to different locations, pick them up, and then bring them to a single location. And the kicker there is when you finally got, get to your destination, you have to make three or four trips back and forth to your ship to get those boxes to their destination. God, why didn't they just give us a hand cart? But these are things that don't seem to be thought of through the eyes of the player, the people that have given them $300 million. And there really has to stop being this swinging of a pendulum. Iterative not major changes for things like economy. Iterative, not major changes for things like the flight model. You gotta tweak them, not make them total opposites. So that's my rant. So the bugs that I had in the game and why it took me a lot more than 45 minutes to do this one mission is something right here. The backend servers were crap. Things just weren't popping in. 
It took me a while of walking back and forth and back and forth before the emergency shelter, which was my final destination, where I had to run three boxes off my ship and put them into the emergency shelter. It took three times, four times, five times of running back and forth before the whole emergency shelter was able to render in. And that's something I'm sure that will be fixed over time. Here we are running our last box and it's done. So I'll say this, there's good and bad parts to every single patch and over the course of three months, like with 3.9, CIG tends to fix them and make everything work. And we're all gleeful and happy and glassy eyed because our sim working the way that we wanted to. And then a new patch comes out, the nerf back comes out, and we're starting our frustration all over again. So I'm going to say this. Nothing deters me from playing the game because this is my favorite game ever. And I know that there's a lot of you out there that are probably giving me the raspberry because it's not a game. It is a game. I, I can say it this way. Flight sim. What do you do? You fly from A to B. What's the game in that? Flying from A to B. Flying in a great ship. Seeing great scenery when you're flying over the U.S. or Canada or Europe or Asia or even Antarctica. And in this sim, we get to fly between three planets, four planets, and fly all over each one of the planets. To me, that's great. I build my own gameplay. I have a great time. I hang out with the Cobra Force. They're wonderful. I hang out with my organization, the Enablers. I have a great time. My next video, we're going to attack that flight model, see how it works. We're going to get into turrets at some point, see how they work and see all the changes that have actually been better. I'm not a big FPS person, so I don't know if I'm the one that's going to talk about the changes to FPS or the new guns that are out, but I'll use them and I'll probably gush all over the lightning guns. I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos for Star Citizen again. I know I say that from time to time, but I've turned a corner, folks, and this is my release from the job that I have to do eight hours a day. And I think that I am back for the long haul, just like I was in the beginning. All right, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe to my channel, please click the notification icon because it will notify you of all those videos that I commit to having out for you. And folks, there is a Patreon over at patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Batgirl. Any help you give is help I could give back to the community. I really want to up that uh, income just a tiny bit so I could start buying some big ships and start giving them away in the channel because you guys deserve something for watching me all the time. Oops, I bet you most of you have a lot more ships than me, don't you? Anyway, we're going to go back to New Babbage. We're going to land and we're going to say sayonara. So you all be safe out there. And I will talk to you soon.